What's up everyone? Welcome back to Quest Mode. Dead Cells is without a doubt one of my favorite games of 2018. Its beautiful world, rewarding progression systems, and buttery smooth mechanics helped it to become one of the very best games on the entire Switch library. But what if you're now looking for something else to scratch that same itch? Well, Rogue Legacy just popped onto the eShop, and after just a few hours in, you'll notice the similarities to Dead Cells. But I'll go one step further. As great as both games are, I think Rogue Legacy is more addictive. In fact, it's one of the best indie games I've ever played. So, let's take a look. I first played Rogue Legacy a few years ago when it released on the PlayStation Vita, and here's the deal. If you like Dead Cells or any Rogue Light, you'll friggin' love this game. Sure, it lacks the visual polish of Motion Twin's more graphically stunning masterpiece, but if you let that turn you off, you'll be missing out on the game that to some degree might have inspired Dead Cells to begin with. At first, you explore procedurally generated levels that seem, well, impossible. Your initial runs will be short and brutal. Moreover, you have to start from the very beginning every time you die. But just like in Dead Cells, there are systems in place that keep you from ever feeling 100% defeated. Most notable is that you discover blueprints that unlock new weapons, armor, and abilities. Sound familiar? But Rogue Legacy takes its progression system even further. Not only can you spend your coin to build out these blueprints, but you can pour your hard-earned gold into an RPG-like skill tree at the end of each run. So sure, you might have just gotten your ass kicked, but after 15 to 20 runs, you'll have upgraded your health, your magic points, your strength, and a lot more. Before you know it, you'll be able to beat that boss that absolutely destroyed you on your first attempt, or you'll be able to hold your own in that far-off area of the castle that mercilessly humiliated you just a few hours earlier. It's because of this that you'll experience the same temptation to try again and again and again that you experienced in Dead Cells, but for me, the urge here was much more potent. That's due in large part to the faster pace. Whereas runs in Dead Cells can last an hour or more, your attempts through Rogue Legacy are over in as little as 5 to 15 minutes. This means your progression is more immediate and your deaths are less devastating. Sure, there's not quite as much to explore in Rogue Legacy, and there aren't any Metroidvania-style exploration elements, but it doesn't matter. The fun and tricky levels, the main bosses, the mini-bosses, the secrets, the platforming, the hilarious writing, it all adds up to an experience you'll gladly want to experience over and over and over again. Another similarity between these two games that's much more common among other roguelites is that you start each run with several random modifiers that affect how you play. In Dead Cells, you get three random weapons. Similarly, Rogue Legacy provides you with a random magic ability, but it does something else that's far more interesting and infinitely more hilarious. You see, each playthrough in Rogue Legacy puts you in the shoes, or rather the armor, of a knight. That knight also happens to be the offspring of the knight you played as previously, who's now, of course, dead. Along with the responsibility of clearing the castle of monsters, each knight also inherits a random genetic condition from their predecessor. On one round, you might be colorblind, turning the graphics black and white. On another, you could have ADHD causing you to move faster. On the other hand, some modifiers make things more challenging, such as Dyslexia, which jumbles all the text in the game, or Vertigo, which literally turns the entire dungeon upside down. I'm not joking, these are actual things in the game, and they range from benign to game-changing. Lastly, I'd be remiss to do a comparison video without pointing out the obvious. Dead Cells 100% outshines Rogue Legacy when it comes to the visuals and the controls. Of course, you could argue that the look of Rogue Legacy adds to its charm, and it does, but my god, Dead Cells is one beautiful game. And while Rogue Legacy controls well enough, Dead Cells sports far smoother mechanics. From the combat, to the running, to the jumping, it's all flawless. But despite this, and despite the fact that I absolutely loved Dead Cells, my initial assertion holds. 
in terms of preventing me from putting the controller down at 4 a.m. when I have real things to do the next day, like earn a living, Rogue Legacy wins that battle. Like I said at the outset, it's one of the best indie games I've ever played. If you're a fan of the roguelite genre, or you want to be, but haven't found a game that seems to justify all the hype, you should give Rogue Legacy a try, right now. Well, thank you so much for watching the entire video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And as always, if you never want to miss one of my videos, all it takes is clicking that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next one.